Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, this is not the second slide. Let's go back. Um, okay, this is my task today to um, uh, tell you about the impact of microenvironment in multiple myeloma, but I'm going to do it in with particular emphasis on immune resistance because actually it's not a fashionable idea to do immunotherapy today, but I'm an immunologist, so we study the microenvironment always in the, uh, pres uh, in the context of immune cells. So um, if we start the talk with a very simple uh, myeloma cell, and actually we are uh, uh, um, treating these myeloma cells for many years with chemotherapy, and we have to realize that this is a difficult to eradicate my malignant plasma cell clone. But this myeloma cell is not doing this alone. When we start to uh, analyze this, we quickly realize that myeloma cell is surrendered in the bone marrow with several cells, including bone marrow stromal cells, including uh, 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 endothelial cells, including the ex extracellular matrix, and also the osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And with the intensive crosstalk between these cells and the myeloma cells, especially uh, uh, in the via cytokines, but also very important, uh, the cell, cell interactions, myeloma cell is able to uh, survive, proliferate, but also in, uh, able to uh, escape therapy because these uh, signaling pathways induce a therapy resistance. Actually, this, the idea of uh, cellular interactions inducing cellular uh, uh, therapy resistance has been already recognized already by more than 20 years ago by uh, Kerbel et al. And he showed in 1998 uh, that a tumor cell, which is, in the, is a solid tumor, by the way, tumor cell, which is uh, in the three-dimensional environment, is much more able to survive in the presence of cyclophosphamide than in a 2D environment. And when you use hyaluronidinase, you can uh, uh, reduce this resistance of tumor. This, uh, but actually, the, all the um, uh, idea in the myeloma setting is coming from the uh, pioneering work of uh, Dalton et al. Actually, by, uh, his work and the work of others, we know that at the moment, uh, myeloma cell intensively uh, cross talks with the stroma cells via cytokines, but especially by, via cellular interactions to uh, uh, result in activation of survival pathways, uh, the cell cycle arrest, but more important maybe for today's talk is the uh, uh, modulation of the expression of apoptotic molecules in the cell to induce therapy resistance. But, okay, um, I said to you I'm an immunologist, what about um, immunological cells? So actually what we are doing is, uh, nowadays we are uh, targeting myeloma, not only with chemotherapy, but immunotherapy. Uh, so actually we have cytotoxic T cells, we have CAR T cells, we have NK cells mediating antibody, uh, uh, medi uh, antibodies uh, and complements. So actually in this microenvironment there is a whole uh, process of immunology going on and we have to address that. First of all we need to find actually is, is there a, an immune escape in this uh, microenvironment. Well there is an is immune escape. You can. Uh, show it very quickly with uh, one study of us. For example, we do dendritic cell uh, uh, vaccinations with peptide-loaded uh, 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 peptide dendritic cells. When after this, for example, we induce a robust uh, uh, cytotoxic T cell response in these patients, but this does not translate into clinical response. So actually myeloma cell is at that moment able to uh, escape this very tremendous immune system uh, in a way that we don't understand yet. So uh, actually when we are talking about immune escape, we just change all of the uh, pictures that I showed you and we uh, come up with other pictures. So actually uh, the immune escape uh, Currently thinking, current thinking is uh, because of the many uh, regulatory cells uh, in the microenvironment. So we have 
regulatory T cells, we have MDSCs, we have uh, type 2 macrophages, which are all inhibiting these cytotoxic T cell responses, NK cell responses, and helper T cell responses. And uh, of course, there is, of, uh, there is the PDL1, these immune checkpoint inhibitors. Actually, we make a very tall, a different uh, picture uh, than the chemotherapy uh, resistance uh, when we are talking about immune resistance. So actually, um, one, of the, uh, one of the cells in this microenvironment is proven to be uh, induced by microenvironment. That's actually the uh, MDSCs. MDSCs are uh, cells which are uh, CD14 or CD15 posi uh, positive. They have CD33, say A11B. They don't have HLA-DR, but uh, several of these microenvironment cytokines induce uh, MDSCs via uh, induction of STAT3, and these uh, cells uh, produce arginase, IDO, TGF beta, and uh, uh, several other molecules to inhibit cytotoxic T cells, NK cells, IL7 uh, uh, polarization, and they inhibit direct differentiation. And actually, these are really microenvironment induced cells. And it is also already known that in the myeloma uh, setting, there is increased frequencies of these cells in the bone marrow. And in some other uh, 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 disease models, they also contribute, uh, or at least they correlate with the clinical outcome. So then they, we have the immune checkpoints, of course, in the microenvironment. It's, we know that they are strong down regulators of immune response to tumors. And we know that actually in the myeloma uh, patients, their uh, expression of the immune checkpoints PD-1 and PDL one are highly, uh, highly upregulated in the MRD positive patients, which is the work of uh, Spanish colleagues. And actually, this proves that uh, there is an, an immune uh, checkpoint upregulation in the mi microenvironment. And actually, micro immune checkpoint blockade is now, nowadays considered to be a, co a common dominator of approach in the cancer therapy. It works. It uh, uh, PD1, uh, one, PDL1 blockade induces objective re responses, but only in a fraction of patients. So actually, this starts to uh, uh, from with this information, we start to think: Are there other immune, uh, escape mechanisms than immune suppression in the, micro in, in the micro environment? And this is not very well known at the moment. And this is the, the, we don't pay so much attention to these uh, things. And actually, we have to ask whether is there an immune resistance, another way of immune resistance? Yes, there is. For example, we have here our CAR T cells uh, 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 against CD38. And we see that a very nice correlation with the CD38 expression and the CAR T cell lysis. But as you see, this cell is more susceptible uh, to CAR T cell lysis than this one. There is a relative resistance of the T cells. And this is definitely a different escape mechanism than uh, immune suppression. And we asked the question whether this could be also uh, induced by microenvironment. And for, with this, uh, uh, I'm coming back to this microenvironment and stromal cell interactions and to show you the apoptotic pathways in uh, microenvironment. And this is the uh, extrinsic pathway. It starts with uh, caspase uh, dead cell receptors, uh, caspase, three, uh, caspase 8, and ends with the caspase 3, which uh, delivers the uh, dead signal in the nucleus. And this is the uh, intrinsic pathway, which involves mitochondria, uh, mitochondria and starts with bug and bug activity by bit, and after the destabilization of the membrane, we have this uh, apoptosome formation, caspase 9, and it, it again ends in the caspase 3 pathway. So this is the uh, pathway, and these pathways are regulated very, uh, uh, um, uh, very well with the uh, BCL2, MCL1, anti-apoptotic proteins, which are the, these are also regulated with pro-apoptotic proteins, and there is also a regulation at the level of caspase 3, which survive in XCAP, the kind of molecules, and we have all of these uh, uh, pathways are modulated by stromal cell and uh, my myeloma interactions by cytokines, which actually activates ACT and Merck pathway, and we can uh, have inhibitions in these uh, uh, 
levels, and we have also the CAMDR, which is also uh, resulting in uh, inhibition of uh, uh, or activation of BCL2, MCL1, and the activation of servivine to induce uh, cell adhesion mediated drug resistance. So, but actually, what, have, what about the cytotoxic T cells? Cytotoxic T cells are here. Uh, they have the mechanisms of uh, killing of the myeloma cells, but as you see, I'm not going to uh, go uh, so much into detail, all these mechanisms of cytotoxic T cells, which starting with dead cell receptors or granzyme B, and at the point of scaspase 3, actually cytotoxic T cells use the same apoptotic pathways to induce myeloma cell death. So the question is, can cell adhesion induce also a cytotoxic T cell resistance? And uh, the, uh, to, uh, to find that answer, we use a very simple system. We have a cytotoxic T cell here. We have the luciferase positive myeloma cells. We have stroma cells. And we actually putting yes or no stroma cells. We can analyze whether microenvironment can have an influence of these cells. And the answer is actually yes. This is uh, the cytotoxic uh, uh, survival of the myeloma cells without any stromal cells in, the, in this uh, essay. And this is the uh, survival with stromal cells, including endothelial cells. And you see that it is significantly decreased. So we have an immune uh, resistance. It is immune resistance because actually we know that this is not immune suppression. Those cytotoxic T cells are very well able to generate granzymes. So it is an, not an immune suppression here, what we are looking at, but it is an immune resistance uh, induced by microenvironment. And this is actually a cell cell. Uh, 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 contact dependent phenomenon because actually when you disrupt these cell, cell contacts with a transvel, you lose the inhibition of uh, the cytotoxic activity. So uh, coming back to the uh, whole picture, we asked, our, we asked the question whether these kind of molecules would be involved in this uh, resistance and the answer is again yes. When you inhibit this surviving uh, a molecule, with a small molecule with, which is called YMA55, you will see that this inhibition um, generated by stroma will decrease and the activity of cytotoxic T cells will be significantly increased, uh, not in uh, CD4 positive cells, but also CD8 positive cells. And this is a synergistic interaction, so meaning that actually by blocking surviving activity and uh, we can rescue uh, the uh, immune activity of the cytotoxic T cells in this microenvironment model. So actually, we can all, uh, uh, prove that this uh, immune resistance occurs also in vivo in a mouse model in which we put um, uh, scaffolds with, uh, loaded or not loaded with uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, and we do our treatment. And as you see, if there is no uh, uh, coat, um, if there is myeloma uh, coated scaffolds, uh, MSC coated scaffolds, there is no activity of the T cells in this system. But if there are no scaffolds, these T cells are able to er eradicate myeloma. So meaning that scaffolds are inhibiting the activity of uh, the my MSCs are inhibiting the activity of T cells in this in vivo model too. So actually, in this in vivo model, we can use the YMA55 to modulate this uh, uh, immune resistance. And as you see, uh, YMA55 does not do anything uh, alone. T cells do a little, and the combination uh, does the uh, real job. And uh, we can get rid of the myeloma uh, in this model using combination of T cells and YMA55. So actually, this is uh, uh, nice. And we have also shown that uh, in this uh, system, Notch and P53 is uh, involved. Uh, by using activators of inhibitors of NOTCH and P53. Actually, this is the uh, P53 experiment. Uh, using an activator of the P53, you can get rid of this uh, immune uh, resistance. Again, as, uh, the same thing what I showed you for YMA55. And this is also true for uh, NOTCH signaling. If you inhibit the NOTCH signaling with GSI, a gamma secretase inhibitor, you will get, uh, you will again uh, get rid of this immune resistance. So this is fine. This is for the CTLs. 
But what about the most famous uh, daratumumab, actually, which is m much interesting for nowadays for uh, myeloma treatment? Actually, the activity of daratumumab, ADCC activity of daratumumab, is, is in a similar way inhibited by uh, stromal cells. This is activity of daratumumab without stromal cells. This is the activity with stromal cells. It is significantly in inhibited, as you see. And, uh, and this is, again, uh, not an immune f uh, suppressor uh, activity because, again, these NK cells which are mediating this ADCC are able to, uh, very well able to make granzymes, which co uh, also proves that this is not immune suppression, but it is real immune resistance of the uh, myeloma cells in the presence of stromal cells. Uh, this is uh, not only for cell lines, uh, this is, uh, this is, these are the primary uh, patient material, again, uh, you have here the uh, daratumumab activity in the uh, absence and in the presence of uh, stromal cells. You see the uh, strong downregulation of uh, ADCC. And when you combine this with YMA55, again, this uh, uh, magic uh, bullet or uh, whatever you want to call, the in activity increases and the whole in uh, inhibition uh, of the stromal cells decrease a lot, and this is again a synergistic activity between daratumumab and YM55, uh, again proving us that this kind of immune resistance phenomena, uh, phenomena is, it does exist and it can be modulatable by these kind of molecules. So, um, and this, is, this can be also modulated in, in vivo. It is now shown here. When you use daratumumab in this system, uh, in this mouse model, uh, we didn't get so much uh, activity of daratumumab. And YMA55 does uh, something, uh, a, a moderate uh, anti-tumor effect, but the tumor, are, uh, tumor is disappearing only, or at least suppressed very much, when you uh, combine daratumumab and YMA55 in this model. So actually, um, these are telling us that immune resistance is a separate uh, phenomena than immune suppression in the microenvironment, and it could be modulated, and it should be modulated in, in order to get more immune responses. And how, to you, how you can modulate them? That's the last slide. Actually, the, in the to towards clinical translation, we are at the moment using another uh, type of uh, um, surviving inhibitor. This is an FL118. It's an, a new uh, molecule, which is a competition analog, and it inhibits surviving CAP uh, and then MCL1. And again, actually, FL118 acts really similar as YMA55 to abrogate the immune resistance phenomena that we hear, see here to synergize with uh, CTLs as well as with uh, daratumumab to improve the efficacy of these uh, uh, agents, immunological agents. And hereby, I would like to conclude that actually accessory cells of bone marrow protect myeloma cells from CTL and antibody-mediated treatment. And this uh, protection or this escape mechanism is really distinct than immune suppression, and it involves surviving notch and P P53, and it can be modulatable by using these kind of uh, uh, the, uh, small molecules which inhibit surviving. And what more important maybe for today is these mechanisms of drug resistance and immune resistance converge with each other. So that's why it is probably better to apply immuno immunotherapy early, especially before patients become resistant to apoptotic agents, anti-apoptotic agents. Thank you very much.